Well, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, everyone, for um, spending some time to attend this uh, webinar. Um, my name is Joe Green, and I'm from Mark Discovery District. I'll moderate our webinar today. Um, a special thank you to our three speakers, uh, David Warman from the National Institute of Standards and Technology, uh, Manisha Shah from the uh, White House, and Martin Burns from uh, Hyper Tech. Inc, but also is a, been the technical advocate behind the button initiative within the Smart Grid um, Interoperability Forum. Um, so um, thank you again for spending some time. Um, some background to this um, webinar um, is really that Ontario has taken quite a leading position in the deployment of smart meters and the, and the investment in smart grid infrastructure. There's been a significant interest at a policy level, at an industry level, and at a consumer level about how best to utilise that asset. Uh, and a key, key issue has been how else could you reuse and apply this information. Um, so the Future of Energy Summit Mars Discovery, uh, Mars Discovery District hosted, we announced the intention to bring together the regulators, the industry, the uh, technology industry, and the utilities to be able to explore how you might enable a pilot to enable access to that using the green button model as a reference to achieve that. We were very fortunate David Warman spoke at that conference and this is really a follow-up to that discussion and we've been working with probably most of you on this line uh, and others to try and work out how that pilot um, might work and how we might be able to scale it up to the rest of Ontario. So really the purpose of this um, webinar is to enable all of you to hear directly from the leading experts who helped develop the standards, who looked at this from a policy perspective, who looked at this from a very tactical perspective. Um, so it's really an opportunity for us questions and to uh, stimulate some discussion online around this. So just briefly, um, the three speakers that we're very, very pleased to spare their time to speak to us today. Firstly is David Warman, who is Deputy Director of the Smart Grid and Cybersecurity Physical uh, Services Programme, and is Manager of the Smart Grid Standards and Research and Engineering Laboratory. So it's David who's been really kind of the, the leading um, energy and force behind developing the, the Green Button Standards uh, set and helped bring that to realisation along with many others. Uh, Monisha Shah uh, is joining us from the White House um, Council on Environmental Quality and prior to that was also with the Department of Energy so has a very strong perspective on the policy background to this and the wider objectives that, were, that the US sought to achieve in enabling access to this data uh, and the wider context for that. So hopefully we can speak, uh, should be a, provide unique insights to those from the Ministry of Energy and some of the regulatory bodies that are joining us today. Uh, and also we're very pleased to have Martin Burns join us, who is technical champion of the NIST uh, Priority Action Plan Group, who are particularly behind the uh, Green Button Group. Um, so thank you to all three of you for speaking today. Um, as we go through this, please raise your hand, attendees, if you wish to ask a question at any time. The presentation is in sections, so what we'll do is we'll collate and moderate those questions at the end of each section make this manageable. Um, Samir will, na will now just outline the logistics of how to do that and how to use the platform where you're delivering this from. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'll keep it quick because I know we want to get into the meat of it. Um, for those of you that are on the Adobe Connect software, you'll be able to see uh, on the top left a little man with his uh, hand up. It's a little icon there. If you do have any questions, feel free to just raise your hand as uh, we've already got one there. Um, and uh, and once you've uh, once you've done that, at the end of every section, what we'll do is we'll uh, collate those uh, hands up, and then Joe will facilitate the questions from there. Um, we will be taking the questions at the end of every section, as as Joe mentioned. If you have any other questions, um, again, feel free to raise your hand, and we'll be able to take that. Or if anyone just wants to do any kind of back channel thing, feel free to email me at Samir at, at svasta at marsdd.com. Most of you should have my email address. Uh, I'll pass it back over to Joe, um, so I won't take up too much of your time. Thanks. And if there's any um, issues with using that software now, if you raise your hand or um, indicate that, then we can, we can address that now. Uh, 
Otherwise, I'd like to hand over, now hand over to, um, just to outline the agenda briefly before handing over to a woman. So um, we're just going to cover a brief introduction which I've made and the logistics of step which uh, Samir has covered. So first we're going to hand over now to David Warman, who's going to run through uh, the first section of those pre that presentation uh, and be joined by his colleagues. Hello, Thanks, this is uh, Dave Warman. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Very <laughs> clearly from here. Okay. And I see my first slide there. So uh, you've already gone over uh, the, um, the presenters and I'd like to personally thank Joe uh, for the opportunity to uh, speak with you all, uh, and also for inviting me up for the previous Future of Energy uh, conference. I'm excited about how the conversation has continued to progress in Ontario, and absolutely delighted that you're interested in uh, getting the most out of uh, energy usage information for uh, consumers. Uh, Ontario is, is worldwide known as being very well positioned you know, with your smart grid advances and smart meters and time of use you know, uh, pricing and, and other kinds of stuff. So I think this might be a, a, a great pilot program for you to consider. I'm going to move to uh, my next slide here, which in essence uh, lets you know some of the things that we're going to talk about today. Uh, as I mentioned, Green Button is focused on getting customers with access to their energy usage information. And there's many different aspects to the program. Uh, there's the policy aspects, there's the branding of it and making sure that you, consumers get a consistent experience and that's something that we need to do additional work on uh, and we're looking for uh, participation from uh, Ontario folks and others. As well as there's the detailed technologies and associated data standards which are really at the core of, of Green Button. On this next slide, this gives an introduction to the different portions of the presentation. I'm going to turn things over to Manisha Shah to give a um, high-level U.S. government White House perspective and intro to the policy and innovation campaign, and then I'll pick up the reins again and talk about the policy context and what NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, has done to support the standards for Green Button and the Smart Grid. And then we'll turn things over to Marty Burns to get into some of the technical details, and as was mentioned, we'll answer questions at each of the breaks. So with that, I will turn over uh, reins to Manisha Shah and advance the slide for her here, and then she can pick up presentation. Great. Um, can you guys all hear me okay? Yep. Yeah. Um, yep. Yep. Well, uh, thanks so much for uh, inviting us to participate in this webinar. We are really excited to share our experience with the Green Button Initiative uh, with you all today. Um, I will, you know, kind of give a quick overview of sort of the, the rapid um, e evolution of this um, really exciting campaign from a policy perspective and the innovation aspects of it, and uh, give you a quick overview on, from that from that side of things. And um, you know, um, Marty and Dave will give you the, the juicy, juicy details of how we actually made it work. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm an energy analyst by training, and so it's really exciting to see. Uh, a campaign like this where we're making data more and more available for lots of different purposes. Um, and so, you know, it's just been amazing to, to watch um, how quickly it's moved forward. Um, so just to give a, a, a quick overview, the, the green button um, concept is really very simple. It's just this, this uh, common sense idea that consumers should have access to their own electricity data in a common format and an easy to use format and something that's computer readable. So this is this is part of a smart, broader smart disclosure campaign where we're trying to get access to complex data, um, sometimes which is buried in PDF forms or sometimes buried on paper, um, and, and pull that out and make it more um, easily accessible for consumers to do, um, to make, make their lives easier, to save money, to save energy and to reduce emissions and um, do all sorts of really interesting things with the data. Um, you know, and this is, this is um, moving across lots of different sectors, um, but you know, we, we've been able to um, <coughs> access this concept for, for the energy sector. And so basically, you know, what, what happens from a consumer standpoint is um, the utilities that are making this uh, green button data available um, to, to their customers, they just log into their their web portal where they might be paying their electricity bill 
and once they log in, they can see a little green button, a logo, and so if you look at this um, slide, there's a screenshot of the Pacific Gas and Electric um, website in uh, California, and so you can see the little green button logo at the bottom right corner, and so a consumer would just click on that, and they could download in, uh, in, in terms of California 13 months of hourly electricity consumption data. So that's the basic um, concept of what green button looks like today. So let's just talk a little bit about how did this how did this whole thing get started? Um, well, it gets, got started with a, a I'm going to take a little side tangent here with a concept called blue button, where um, basically you know soldiers were coming back from war uh, in the U.S. and they were having trouble getting access to their own health care records. Uh, you know. Either they're coming back and they have to put all their their prescription bottles and um, you know their medicine bottles in a paper bag and taking it to their doctor. And we thought, well, couldn't we make this simpler for them? You know, they they put so much time and effort into um, serving our country, so why not provide them a service? So we started simple with um, providing them their prescription um, information in a simple ASCII format, and that just took off and really grew, and now there's, um, this was the Veteran Affairs um, Administration started off with it, and now we've got the Health and Human Ser Department of Health and Human Services on board, the Department of Defense, a number of different, sorry about the train in the background, <laughs> a number of different uh, um, care insurance companies, um, even Walgreens, which is like a, a retail um, outlet here where you can go and you, you might you know, pick up your um, over-the-counter drugs, you can go there and print out your, your health care records. And so this, this initiative really took off. Um, it started in 2011 and it had also rapid growth. And because this was so successful, we're, they're expecting to, have, to reach over 60 million Americans, hopefully this year, um, with access to this type of health care information in a common and easy-to-use format. So um, based on the success of the Blue Button campaign, um, the former chief technology officer for the U.S. federal government, Anish Chopra, he uh, decided to challenge the electric utility industry and say, why can't we do the same thing with electricity data? And so um, this last fall in 2011, uh, Anish Chopra um, kind of made a call to action to the electric utility industry to say, let's, let's do the same thing and let's call it green button. Um, and okay. so the stars are sort of aligned in that um, – Marty and, and Dave uh, and, and the large um, standards development organizations have been working on a standard, which they'll, they'll give you more details about. Um, over the last several years, we, we joke around that it was an overnight five-year success <laughs> because they've been working on it for a while. Um, and the North American Energy Standards Board released the data standard upon which Green Button is based last fall. Um, some of the California utilities were interested, uh, and there was regulatory support, um, strong regulatory support from the Public Utility Commission to provide data in this type of a format. And so um, in January of uh, this year, we launched the Green Button Initiative with uh, the three main California utilities, investor-owned utilities, um, and a few other companies. And uh, since then, the initiative has just taken off. Um, now we have, um, let me see here. We have over uh, 23 different electric utilities and electricity providers that have committed to provide Green Button to over 31 million homes and businesses across the United States. Um, there's 13 million homes and businesses today that have um, Green Button live. Um, this is in uh, California and Texas and um, with NSTAR up in the northeast part, northeastern part of the U.S. And the really interesting thing about um, the commitments that have been made by all these different utilities is that some have advanced metering infrastructure, some um, only have AMR. Um, NSTAR, for example, is uh, in the Northeast is providing monthly data in this format, um, and the California utilities and Texas utilities are providing this um, data in uh, more granular form for in 15-minute interval or monthly data, um, hourly data. So the, the data standard is flexible enough to accommodate that, and we're encouraging all different types of utilities across different regulatory regimes to, to really adopt the standard and provide the this, this service and, and value um, to the investments they made in smart meters or um, their different um, 
software infrastructure and provide that value to their customers. So um, there's just been a lot of excitement on this campaign, and we've seen it grow very quickly. Um, you know, we had a have had a round of announcements, um, you know, in May and March and June, and we're we're working towards another round of announcements for early October. Uh, and and really, our role in the federal government has been to encourage um, these utilities and companies to adopt the standard. And it was a you know industry consensus process to develop the standard, and it's been a voluntary adoption of the standard. So there hasn't been any um, federal requirements or mandates. There hasn't been a lot of federal funding that's necessarily gone towards this besides um, support of the smart meter investments. Uh, and so this has really been uh, a very interesting campaign because it's all been led and um, conducted by voluntary adoption of the data standard by industry. So we, we just think that's, that's wonderful. Um, it's been a great um, example of public-private partnerships, you know, um, and the federal government supporting this type of private uh, sector innovation. Um, and as, uh, as, as we're here today, we've also been noting that there's been a lot of international interest, uh, which Dave will talk about uh, in some of his slides, too. So in addition to um, uh, kind of encouraging utilities and electricity providers to um, adopt the data standard and provide data to their customers in this format, we've also been trying to figure out what do you do with the data once you get it. Um, so part of our this initiative has also been an, uh, focused on innovation, spurring an ecosystem of innovation around the data. Um, because most, most customers, I think, when they download the data, will see that it's, you know, um, a 15 megabyte file or, you know, it's... Uh, uh, three columns of, uh, you know, if you were to upload it into Excel, um, you know, of hourly electricity consumption data. And I'm not sure, I mean, I'm an energy analyst, but I'd, I'm not sure if I would even um, sit around and, and do analysis with it myself. But there are so many interesting um, applications and tools and um, products where you could um, upload the data and use it and, and do some really interesting things with the information. Um, so we've, uh, in, in trying to spur the innovation around this, we've sponsored an apps for Energy Challenge, Department of Energy um, co-sponsored that with um, PG&E and iTron um, and Silver Spring Network. And uh, there were 55 uh, or so submissions. It was a six-week um, contest, and there were some really interesting things which came out of it. I think um, Ron Dembo is actually on our webinar. He was... Uh, his company won zero foot uh, carbon footprint. They won the um, the most popular uh, app award, and so they they were able to do some really innovative things with the data. Um, there's also an energy data initiative going on, uh, which was launched in May, uh, which is an open data initiative uh, where basically the the new chief technology officer for the federal government, um, Todd Park, he uh, has been run had been running a health data initiative where we were trying to spur um, innovation around open government data on, on the health side, you know, with the blue button and other health um, data sets, and so we decided to take that same concept and apply it to energy data. So there's a number of teams which have come together to build um, to build platforms and products and services around the green button data as well. And then we've also been working with the federal government, um, all the different agencies uh, within the federal government in the U.S. to also look at the different energy efficiency programs that we have, uh, renewable energy programs, um, and the tools and products that we're developing in-house, uh, you know, we should kind of eat our own dog food, I suppose, and uh, make sure that we're incorporating the green button um, uh, uh, data standard into our own tools and products so that we're um, streamlined, streamlined across. And I think I was just talking with the um, EPA Energy um, Environmental Protection Agency Energy Star group um, about their portfolio manager tool, which is a commercial buildings benchmarking tool, and, and I think they're developing uh, one that the Canadian government might actually use. So um, that could be a nice connection there uh, to provide the electricity data um, for that for that uh, benchmarking tool in the green button format. Um, this next slide is. Uh, uh, pretty pretty busy, but you, you can see that there's a wide variety of different companies um, besides the electric utilities which have come on board to adopt the Green Button Data Standard. Um, these are energy efficiency implementation companies. There are products and device companies that build um, programmable thermostats, for example. There are companies, large companies like Johnson Controls that work with um, large commercial buildings and industrial sites to help with their energy management. 
There's also distributed solar companies which have in incorporated the Green Button Data Standard into their business processes for helping um, consumers basically right size a solar panel for their house based on their electricity consumption. Um, so there's lots of different ways that people are thinking about using this data and um, we found that there's been a very positive response from the industry on, um, on the data standard. Um, <coughs> So I'll just pause there and uh, I and turn it over to, to Mar uh, Dave now. Dave and Marty are going to provide more of the details underneath um, the very, very important standards development process and uh, the, stand the actual standard uh, for the Green Button um, initiative. This is Dave. I think I'll turn things over to Joe to see if we have any questions yet today. I think we have a first question on from uh, Michael on the line. Um, so if you could just introduce yourself, the organization you work for, and the next question you have. Is that Michael Meehan there available? I seem to be having trouble with the audio. Can you guys hear me? We can hear you now. Oh, that's great. Okay. Uh, perfect. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, my name is Michael Meehan. I'm on, I'm on this call uh, representing Zero Footprint. Oh, by the way, uh, Ron Dembo's organization is called Zero Footprint, not Carbon, carbon Footprint. Um, in, um, I'm calling out of the States, and one of the things that I've found in talking to utilities uh, at the moment is that some of them... Um, don't really see or are having difficulty seeing the value of the green button program for the utilities themselves. They see green button as something that doesn't really help their consumers. It helps, uh, you know, VC backed companies access data on a more standardized format. So there's not really a whole lot of incentive for some of these utilities, according to them, to be participating in the green button program. Um, can you offer some guidance on? Uh, you know, how to respond to um, these types of, uh, um, you know, th this, this type of outlook by the U.S. utilities on Green Button? Um, sure, and I'll, I'll give some comments, and Dave or Marty, if you also want to jump in, um, I'm sure you'd have some, some additional pieces to add. Thank you. Um, I, that's a great question, and I think, um, you know, there's lots of different reasons, I think, why uh, utilities have come on board with this um, particular initiative. Uh, you know, utilities themselves are getting a lot of requests for data for lots, for lots of different purposes. And so I think providing it in a standard format um, can help to streamline some of those data requests, which sometimes need to be very customized. Um, you know, if, if uh, some of the requesters realize that the data is coming in this common format, then that might help streamline efforts. I think um, for the utilities that have energy efficiency requirements and have to implement programs, and work with, uh, you know, different companies to do so, I think this also helps to reduce some of the cost of, um, again, on the data side of implementing the, the program. Um, you know, another piece on this is that with companies that are, with the utilities that are trying to um, implement or in the process of smart meter deployment, uh, you know, one side of the equation has been, you know, what kind of value can you provide back to the customer? And so, in addition to providing the data in the raw format, they're able to use it in other applications and tools. And I think, you know, combining all those pieces together can help to try to tell the story of the, at least the beginning to tell the story of the, the value of the customer of the, the smart meter deployment. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and I think a lot for at least some of the utilities we've been working with, uh, there's been a quick response and quick um, I guess they've been quick to kind of sign on to the initiative because it hasn't, um, it's been, I think, moderate in terms of cost. Uh, you know, as, as some of these folks are working through their smart meter deployments and have web presentment packages or meter di um, data management systems, the vendors that are providing this, um, those packages are, have all, many of them have signed on to the Green Button Initiative to provide that capability. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, getting the, Marty and Dave can speak to this much better than I can, but getting the data to, to the edge of those systems is very complicated, but then getting it in this common format um, seems to be um, fairly, fairly straightforward to do. So yeah. that, I think, has helped to 
um, helped with the implementation or, or the consideration of um, signing on to this type of a um, uh, initiative. And Dave, I'll, I'll just pause there. Dave or Marty, do you want to jump in with? Sure, this is Dave. A few additional thoughts uh, to add to Manisha. Uh, utilities have um, communicated this kind of information before to their customers, often in the form of spreadsheets or you know, other kinds of um, uh, outreach programs, such as done through OPower and other you know, sources. Uh, so the concept of utilities wanting to communicate with their customers is uh, uh, a, a good step. Uh, what Green Button provides is you know, the ability to standardize that interface and provide the information in a way that would be valuable to consumers. But every of the utilities is in a slightly different situation, and typically we work with them you know, depending on what their needs and concerns are. Uh, we've had some you know, interesting uh, uh, interactions. For example, some of the retail uh, electric providers view this as a, um, a differentiator, a way that they can attract and retain customers. And so they've done a little extra work on kind of branding the uh, human-facing portion of Green Button so that it displays their logo and things like that. So there's abilities that we have to be creative with the presentation uh, of the data uh, to humans while we're retaining the computer-friendly portion of it. Uh, in addition, some uh, utilities are in uh, states that you know don't have decoupling. They may be concerned that all of this information simply uh, goes to consumers and then they use it to lower their energy use and then that uh, you know, affects the utility profits. Um, you know, in those circumstances, we're able to talk with folks, and oftentimes there's an energy efficiency program that they you know, may be involved with uh, with their state um, uh, public utility commission, and we're having conversations around you know, making sure that participation in green button efforts is seen as a uh, potential way to encourage those energy efficiency, and maybe the utilities can get credit for that portion of it. So those are at least some ideas. Uh, um, and uh, Marty, I'll just check to see if you have any other uh, stories you'd like to relate. Sure, thanks. Well, uh, just one, one, one additional uh, uh, thought is that uh, the utilities need to manage their power distribution. And demand-side management and customer response uh, programs are a means to do that. To the extent that consumers are empowered to do something, about a, a signal, the uh, the degree to which control or, or modulation of demand uh, uh, can be that can be uh, done will be permitted. So the fact that you uh, make this ecosystem live means that you're likely to have greater control over your power system than you would be empowered to do if if you couldn't. Like in in the old days. You had, the only thing you had is direct load control, and because there wasn't very much the consumer could do about it, uh, if they participated, the degree to which you could actually curtail the uh, the, the load was highly restricted. So this this concept of uh, this ecosystem should enable greater degree of permission to utilities to uh, to control. Okay, very helpful. Thank you very much. Okay, were there any other questions, Joe, or should we proceed? I think there's one other question from Usman uh, Syed, at, um, who's with the uh, Ministry of Energy here in Ontario. Usman? Yeah, hi, can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you very clear here. Okay, great. Um, yeah, thanks, Joe. Yeah, I'm from the uh, Ontario Ministry of Energy, and I, I work in the uh, uh, Smart uh, Grid and Network Policy Group. So thanks. Uh, for you guys for uh, putting this on. It's really informative for us because we're, we're looking at a very similar program right now. Uh, and of course, being from the uh, ministry, I'm impressed that all this was kind of driven through a simple call to, call to action by Mr. Chopra and really little to, to no regulation uh, to, to get the industry, to get the um, uh, standard developed. So I guess my question is if you could um, comment a little on how you got the right industry players at the table to develop the standard, and then subsequent to that, how uh, how you encourage the uh, the wider sector to adopt the standard, um, understanding that there's no uh, regulation in place to actually to drive it. 
Um, and also, are you thinking uh, at any point in the future moving from a voluntary program to mandatory uh, take up of the green button? So this is Dave. Uh, those are some excellent questions, and I'll cover aspects of that as we go into this next section. Um, and specifically around your last uh, portion of the question, do we envision this you know, becoming a mandatory you know, program? Uh, I think right now it's best uh, situated as a voluntary-based program. Um, there have been uh, legislation introduced in the U.S. Congress that uh, focuses on, you know, getting this kind of access, even, you know, broader penetration across the U.S. Uh, but I think for right now, um, we'll stick with the voluntary industry-led program, and we're working with state regulators, and they always have the option to encourage their utilities. Uh, for example, in Pennsylvania, the regulators are encouraging their utilities to uh, participate in the program, and California uh, had um, given strong uh, uh, indications that they wanted you know, this type of, of, of program, which made it quite easy for us to work with them originally. <laughs> I think it's a mix there. And then as far as getting industry participants to the table, uh, what I'll do is, um, if, if it's okay with Joe, I'll simply get into the next section here uh, and um, you know, start talking about the various ways that we've been organizing the community, and then I'll try to remember to pick up pieces uh, uh, of this, the middle parts of the question that you asked. So, uh, there's, there's just one last question, I think, from Ron Denbo. Okay. Ron, are you able to uh, next? Ron, are you Ron Denbo? Are you able to? Uh, Come to the phone and, and field your question. Yeah. What I'll do is I'll uh, we'll keep maybe we can uh, try again the next at the end of the next section. So David, if you want to continue on with your section, then we'll we'll pick that question up again later, hopefully. Okay. Thanks. Well, going towards the um, organization of the uh, utilities and vendors and others. Uh, if you look at the uh, policy level um, uh, drivers. Uh, there was the Energy Independence and Security Act in the U.S., which uh, not only gave NIST some uh, primary responsibility to coordinate the development of a framework for standards for the smart grid, it's also been backed up with uh, administration support, including through the you know, June 2011 policy framework for the smart grid. Uh, so with that kind of high-level support uh, and interest, uh, that's been a key enabler to getting all of the different entities interested in the smart grid together uh, and then have a facilitated conversation to make progress on standards. Uh, what it, the, the legislation did, the Energy Independence and Security Act, is it gave lead responsibility and roles to uh, key U.S. Uh, agencies. So the Department of Energy has the overall lead uh, for smart grid as a whole. And they also have a special interest in um, energy usage information, as well as you know, other agencies such as EPA that Manisha has already mentioned. Uh, in addition, we do a lot with the regulatory community, uh, both at the federal level with the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, uh, but also with the state regulation uh, regulators uh, through NARUC, the National Association of Regulatory Utility Commissioners, as well as individual uh, state commissions. And it's really on the state side that starts to, to touch upon this getting access of energy usage information out to consumers. Uh, so that's been a key uh, driver uh, for that particular part of it. And we've worked quite closely to keep the regulators aware of what we're doing. Uh, and we find their interaction and support invaluable to uh, participating in the standards mix in order to make progress. Uh, and, you know, Manisha mentioned some of the international interests. This is where we've been able to interact with uh, uh, regulators around the world. Canada hosted the World uh, Forum on Energy Regulation just this uh, uh, past summer, this summer, and there we were able to um, uh, meet with regulators around the world, and I got to talk with a variety of the um, Canadian uh, uh, provinces and, you know, uh, entities. Uh, and also in the um, you know, Great Britain, as well as uh, now New Zealand and Australia, uh, there's a great international interest in this as well. So um, what NIST did in particular was focus on the standards for the smart grid. 
And in doing so, we put forth a, you know, a phased plan to make progress where we brought the stakeholders together. Uh, so in answer to you know, the question, you know, how did we get the distribution in the workers, you know, companies you know, there at the same table with the others, we had strong high-level support, including a White House meeting, which encouraged all the participants to participate in this NIST. We got them together and in, through a series of workshops and other events, you know, made progress on a basic you know, roadmap. And then we have followed it up with more uh, formal organizational structures, including the Smart Grid Interoperability Panel, uh, which has over 750 organizations participating in it. And through this, we developed you know, roadmaps, uh, assessed this is a very broad range of smart grid you know, issues, but some of the specific priority action plans that were identified focused on this key issue of, of uh, access of energy usage information to yep. consumers. Uh, in addition to dealing with uh, cybersecurity and privacy and other kinds of uh, uh, related um, uh, policy uh, uh, goals. So through this process, through developing the framework, through working in the Smart Grid Interoperability Panel with its you know, governing board and structure and ability to have these conversations and coordinate standards development, remember that we're not writing the standards within this organization, we're working with established standards development organizations, both international, such as the IEC, ISO, and ITU, as well as uh, a regional one, such as NASB, the North American Energy Standards Board. By having this process and getting people together is how we've been able to you know, make progress and reach consensus. The other overarching policy um, thing was already mentioned by Manisha. This was the smart disclosure and you know, open government. So this has been a priority of the administration. And there's many different aspects to this. Uh, and you know, the, the most recent uh, piece to this is the Energy Data Initiative, which is really exciting. It's a way to think about all of the vast quantities of energy data there may be and look at strategies to get that in the hands of uh, uh, innovators and others. In addition, we are doing work uh, on the, the privacy issue. Uh, we know that, um, for example, Ontario has, has led the way with uh, privacy uh, considerations and we've folded that into our own uh, processes and, and, and policies. Uh, but, you know, the Department of Energy is taking the lead role in addressing some of the uh, privacy issues for the smart grid and that's an important part to, you know, engage the consumers with. And through this, I mentioned the priority action plans and how some focus on energy usage information. There has been a vision of getting this information available uh, so that you know, entrepreneurs and others can provide value to consumers. Utilities can benefit by having you know, simplified and standard, standardized uh, interfaces to provide this sort of information and also use it as a way to do outreach to their consumers and provide value based on smart meters and other kinds of improvements that they're making to the system. And you mentioned the, uh, the stakeholder groups, uh, you know, again, what we've found is that um, by working with standard development organizations such as NASB, the North American Energy Standards Board, we're able to get the utilities very involved in the standardization process. And so they're able to, you know, articulate uh, their needs as well as, um, you know, work with uh, uh, leading uh, um, you know, entrepreneurs to negotiate various uh, aspects uh, to the standards and produce consensus. And so Manisha talked about this standardization success uh, through many years of effort in a variety of different you know, organizations, including those listed here. Uh, we've been able to move the ball on structuring and standardiz standardizing how to you know, information model the energy usage information and develop standards to support this as well as you know, just providing a, a basis for the entire Green Button Initiative. So um, uh, that uh, kind of gets into how you know, we're doing stuff and, and we'll stop here uh, before Marty takes up and, and provides some additional information to see if there's more questions. So I'll turn it back to you, Joe. This is just an opportunity again to, for attendees to raise their hand uh, online and we will um, field any questions we have. Uh, we can just also just recap to see if Ron Denbo is um, there or not on the audio. Uh, I'm, I'm here. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's great. Okay, so 
I didn't have a microphone before. I don't know why, but anyway, it's up. It's popped All up. All right. Um, just a, a quick question. Um, aren't standards really only half of the job? Uh, when I think of Ontario, for example, or other jurisdictions like Ontario, um, there are two components. One is what the utilities have to do to publish their data and to push it out. And the other is what uh, app developers have to do to download the data to talk to it. So um, isn't there a need for an open source uh, software component well, it's an API plus, a kind of bridge that allows everybody to play in the same in the same way. So if I if I if I heard your question correctly, Ryan, uh, you, you're asking uh, I think about the difference between uh, green button download my data and green button connect my data. In that the green button download my data is how a utility provides the download of a file with the energy usage information. The green button connect my data is how applications can interact directly with utilities on behalf of consumers with APIs, as you say. And if, if I, I got it correctly, uh, both, both these components are part of the uh, underlying SB standard. And I'll talk a little bit about it, but uh, we can talk in, in greater detail uh, uh, offline if you like. But the basic principle is that we've defined such APIs, and uh, they're in the process of uh, being developed by some, implemented by some utilities. Is, is that what you were asking? Us? Yeah, that's in, in part what I was asking. I was thinking of the, the peculiar situation we have here where. Uh, there's one 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 smart meter database, but every utility seems to um, interact with that database differently, uh, and they have built their own software. So I, I was wondering if there's a need for a bridge uh, from those from the utilities. So it sounds like you, if I get it right, um, green button covers part of that, but I'm not sure it covers everything that would be needed, at least in our jurisdiction here. But let's take this offline. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't believe there are any other questions raised at the moment. So um, if we'd like to, I guess, go on to the next section. Thank you. So uh, I'm going to uh, start uh, speaking about uh, uh, some of the questions that uh, you all had asked us to address uh, here. And uh, uh, basically, you had some uh, underlying questions about, uh, uh, first, what was the process taken in creating the technical standard for the green button? And I'm going to talk in, in depth about that in a few slides. Uh, second question was, what process was taken in creating a regulatory framework for it? And as my colleagues have uh, identified previously, uh, one of the, the elegant things about uh, Green Button to date is that it's been entirely a voluntary private industry effort uh, with coaching and support uh, from the government and the, and the NIST SGIP and, and our activities, but it was, uh, it was voluntary. How much did the uh, technical implementation for the Green Button cost the utilities, and what did it cost to other players? Uh, our, our experience has been, uh, and as evidenced by the Apps for Energy uh, contest and the speed with which things uh, occurred, is that the implementation of this standard is, is relatively small, uh, mainly if you have the information or you know how to use the information, exchanging it in a standard format is, is, fairly, uh, is fairly minimal. So utilities were able to implement it in a couple of months apps developers in a couple of weeks. And, and so uh, uh, one of the, the, the sweet spots about this interface is that it was so modest but uh, so revealing that, uh, that people could do it uh, quickly and at low cost. What infrastructure needs and changes are needed to accommodate uh, this structure? Basically, as, as Manisha mentioned earlier, uh, the, the trick is to get the usage information out of the meter data management system 
and to the uh, sort of the edge of the enterprise. Uh, so you want to be able to expose the data that you have uh, at your web services that are web servers that are at custom edge. And, and that kind of le leads into why was there a decision for download my data versus real time uh, made initially. And, and the, the big, biggest uh, driver here is that uh, many utilities were offering usage information in various forms. And that means that they had gotten it to that, that edge uh, concept. So uh, in order to support green button download my data, they simply had to translate the uh, form of the data into the standard format and, and provide it. That made this a very lightweight decision for their enterprise because it didn't penetrate very deep. So, you know, for implementation, testing, and deployment, it was very straightforward. So the, uh, the team took advantage of, of this opportunity to uh, produce a, a very early win at the end of last year with the California IOUs. And, uh, and we've been able to build on that ever since. Connect My Data, the automated exchange between applications, that requires the addition of several new web services. And they're not complicated services, they're very simple, but still, uh, because there's a protocol involved uh, there's a, a, and, and, uh, and uh, autonomy between apps and, and machines and machines, it's just a little bit more complicated. So what we chose to do is uh, small steps first and uh, larger steps next. So the small steps download my data, the larger steps uh, we call connect my data. That's the API stuff. So uh, let me let me pause for questions about that because these these are questions you have given us in advance that you wanted uh, us to answer. See if, if I, I've answered them so uh, the team has answered them so far in the presentation. Exception of uh, process for producing the standard. Again, just a quick opportunity to give people a chance to raise their hand, um, see if there are any additional questions at this point. Um, I haven't seen any come up yet, but I'll just give people a moment. Well, we can we can also uh, field questions at the next section break as well. So um, let's, uh, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, if you'd like to continue. Oh, I, I think we've just got one question coming. Hi, it's it's Mike Meehan again. Just okay. just a quick question. There's an awful lot covered in that piece. Um, would you guys be distributing this PowerPoint to the uh, members, to the attendees? Certainly, it would be fine to distribute. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Joe, is that possible? Yes, yes that is. And, we'll, and we can make the, a copy of the webinar available as well. Perfect. Thank you so much. So I think there's one other question from Jessica as well. Hello, hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Jessica. Oh, okay. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, okay, so my question is um, for those jurisdictions that are considering to implement a uh, green button, what do you think are the critical stakeholders to um, involve in like phase one of implementation? And the second question is that few months of uh, developing this project, um, have you had any um, uh, privacy uh, issues? Uh, this is Dave. Um, in answer to the first part of the question, who are some of the key stakeholders involved when considering this, uh, I would say the, um, uh, the utilities as well as the regulators. That's probably the first place to have the in-depth conversation because oftentimes uh, you know, the utility needs and, and desires as well as the regulators, you know, goals uh, through a conversation there is often able to find, you know, a path forward in which, you know, this can be a, a core piece of it. Um, and then the uh, second question, I, I guess I, I didn't quite catch, but maybe someone else uh, did. Yeah, she was asking about, uh, about privacy issues. Uh, yes. Um, 
On the privacy front, um, we've been working within our process. We've had a privacy subgroup within the cybersecurity working group, uh, as well as the North American Energy Standards Board you know, had a privacy um, uh, standard uh, to support the uh, SB standard, the basis for, for Green Button. Um, you know, so, so through these issues uh, or these efforts, many of the underlying issues have been, you know, uh, noted, uh, noted and um, uh, various uh, uh, standard business practices um, and standard, um, you know, ways for utilities to, to deal with, with, with these privacy issues have been uh, uh, worked through. And the Department of Energy, as I mentioned, is, is leading a, a, a larger effort here, the basis for this is to um, uh, use the ability um, in, in the U.S. Our Federal Trade Commission uh, has the ability, if industry participants uh, want to develop a voluntary code of conduct, uh, in essence, they are agreeing to you know hold themselves to certain um, you know uh, uh, privacy protections, you know through like a privacy seal kind of program. Uh, then the Federal Trade Commission can have you know, jurisdiction and ensure that they are fulfilling their um, responsibilities you know, that they've claimed to, to do. So there's a privacy seal effort that is underway to um, uh, support uh, uh, green button um, uh, implementations. Uh, so that's, that's something that we uh, hope will uh, continue to um, uh, develop through. In addition, on the standards front, we've taken steps to limit the um, you know, the information kind of from a fundamental information modeling basis uh, that would be of concern uh, on the privacy side so that all of the, the detailed information, there's like one usage point that Marty will go into in detail later, but you can, in a separate, um, you know, interaction is where, you know, that relationship is tracked. The actual green button file itself you know, doesn't have that kind of information in it. There's a, a UUID or a, a unique identifier within it, but it's not um, you know, tied to personal information. Uh, Marty or Manisha, anything else to add to that? Yeah, I just want to uh, emphasize the last point you made, that uh, the SB standard, the data format, it is inherently anonymous. It uh, was designed to exclude uh, 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 private information, uh, as Dave mentioned. Yeah, I think I think you covered most of the ground, um, Dave. I think the other thing I would just quickly mention is again part of the reason why many utilities will start with the green button download my data is that the data goes you know directly from the utility to the customer, and then the customer can decide what they want to do with the data at that point. Um, and then you know even in the case of the connect my data version of green button, um, you know again as the data is being moved from the utility directly to a third party, again, that's only with customer consent. So I think these are some of the um, sort of how we've architecturally, you know, with the standard, tried to um, take strong consideration of these privacy issues and, and the, the, the utilities who are implementing this are also thinking about it from that standpoint, too. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think, uh, Usman, have you got another question as well, I believe? Yeah, I do. So, as the uh, as Green Button program increases in popularity, there could be hundreds or thousands of energy applications that become available to uh, electricity consumers. So, my question is, in in the direct uh, connect model, where the application connects directly to the utility in an automated fashion, is there any kind of how do you, is there any kind of uh, management of the authorization process? Like how? What, what are the considerations around security? Are there contracts between utilities and the app provider? Um, like, how is that agreement or authorization managed? Sure. Well, from from a technical standpoint, the uh, the uh, Green Button standard, the SB standard, uh, uses OAuth for third party uh, authorization, and uh, the standard itself has a data structure that defines the authorization, which uh, uh, architecturally has a period uh, of uh, uh, you know a life period and it has a uh, a period of time for which, of which uh, data can be acquired as well as uh, the ability the uh, uh, API messaging to uh, 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 bring up a relationship 
and to take down a relationship and various ways of, of exchanging under the relationship. Now, we don't, uh, in the standard itself, we, it doesn't talk about uh, what relationships third parties have with utilities that uh, enable them uh, to do business together. That, that's outside of the standard, but the mechanisms are, are built into the standard. And this is Dave. I'll add one more thing. The, um, the questions you're asking, uh, I believe it would be of the sort like um, uh, what companies, what, what would they have to do in order to uh, get that connection with the utility and get listed you know, on the utility website or something like that. Right. That's a discussion that's going on between the state regulators and their utilities. Uh, so, for example, it's a, uh, an active um, area of discussion in California uh, because some of the um, utilities' uh, uh, initial look at the situation, um, they wanted to um, have some management of that process, but it's unclear yet uh, who exactly might do that. Um, other uh, groups, say like the um, uh, rural electrics, uh, it all depends on the relationships they have, but there, there are groups that are intending to develop a process by which they would uh, evaluate, um, you know, a, a company's implementation before uh, listing it on, on their website. Um, so it's a, a little bit um, uh, jurisdictionally uh, uh, different depending on uh, detailed circumstances. So thanks. Uh, and just a follow-up to that. What, um, what kind of impact has, has the program had on uh, the utilities as far as support for these applications? I mean, I, I understand they don't have to support a third, party, a third party's application itself, but if there was an issue with the API that the, that the um, application uh, connects to, um, I presume that the, the, LD, the uh, utility has to support that. So. Has there been any experience around the, um, the level of ramp up uh, an LDC would have to do, or utility would have to do in order to um, support the Green Button program? This is Dave again. That starts getting into the um, you know, development of testing and certification um, processes to support you know, the effort, and those are ongoing, and Marty will talk more about that in a bit. Um, but with that, uh, you know, support utilities can look at their you know, implementation. Then our goal is to have some consistency and uniformity around that, so that you have a common experience by customers, you know, more broadly to help the um, entrepreneur base, you know, not have to deal with uh, different implementations by different states. So there's a desire over time to help corral some of those issues and address them, and lead to greater uniformity and a testing and certification program to support both the utility implementations as well as uh, 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 vendor implementations as well as consumer experience. Thank you. Shall I go on? And Ron, do you have a question as well? Yes, uh, just a quick one. I mean, the, the and it, it goes to the heart of, imagine you're wildly successful, which I think you are and will be, um, supporting an API, an ongoing support of an API is really what I was trying to lead to with my previous question, is a very difficult thing for standards or organizations such as yourselves to do on an ongoing basis. What, what are your plans for that? You know, I'm talking about. If I could ask you to just bear with us, I, I'll get to that in a couple of slides. Okay, it's, a, right. it's a very important point you raised, and uh, we're focused on it. Thank you. Okay. Okay, and I think, Usma, have you got a, a question as well? Uh, no. Are you done? Sorry. Okay. In which case, let's, let's move forward into the next section. Thank you. Okay, thanks. So uh, what you know, Dave and Monisha uh, uh, told us about uh, you know the overnight success that took years to accomplish. <clears throat> and this slide shows uh, some of the uh, major milestones in the evolution of uh, what's become the green button standards. And one of the things I want you to just look at from this slide is is the 2010 uh, area. 
because the 2010 areas, when the NIST SGIP priority action plan process uh, uh, began uh, with regard to energy usage information, basically what you see is that this open ADE uh, task force, which is part of the UPA IEG organi uh, trade organization, uh, they provided requirements to this priority action plan 10. And by working with stakeholders in about six months, and, and uh, NASB's expertise in accelerated standards development, a uh, standard was ratified. Uh, so just to, to show you that we have these milestones that were accelerated, uh, sorry, accelerated by the efforts of, uh, of uh, NIST through the SGIP working with uh, the stakeholders of the industry. What this slide shows is, is sort of, you know, how, how we actually uh, progress the standards. And if you start in the top left-hand corner, you'll see that, uh, that the IEC SIM standard, the Zigbee Smart Energy Profile, Open ADE, EIS Alliance, a, uh, an organization of facility management uh, technologies, uh, collaborated on a union of requirements that, came, that were able to, to produce this PAP-10 standard, which is NASB RE218. And that, in turn, and that's what happened in uh, October of uh, 2010. And then that result was combined with this NASB RE222, which is the uh, uh, data privacy uh, standard relative to third-party access that David mentioned. And uh, again, the Open ADE Task Force, which is a thread that runs through this. Uh, to produce the SB standard, RE221. And uh, this standard was ratified in, uh, in uh, uh, November 2011, uh, just in time for the uh, Anish Chopra's uh, Green Button Initiative. And then now you have, in this last phase, you have a combination of, uh, of the NASB standard UCA IUG that's de developing testing and certification, and the development of open source tools that are facilitating the, uh, the emergence of this ecosystem of green button uh, related products and services. So this is how it was all done. Uh, mo a lot of the work since the uh, middle of, uh, of 2010 uh, to the present. And if you look at the next slide, uh, this, I, I think, is, uh, is Ron's uh, point about uh, supporting an API and, and the inadequacy of standards alone uh, to address the problem. And what, what this, this term is basically shows is, uh, and, and the related activity uh, diagram, activation energy diagram uh, to the right, is what it takes for technologies to penetrate into marketplaces. And uh, if you look at the, uh, the, the figure to the right, it shows that, you know, there, there's some benefits that, uh, that uh, consumers get from the existence of a technology that they have access to. But there is an activation energy for them to get it. You know, the technology exists, there's a benefit, but getting the technology to the consumer uh, has obstacles. Uh, barriers impede the penetration of the new technology. Barriers like lack of good standards, uh, technical support, distribution system, costs, things like that. And of course, the benefits, without any benefits, there's no reason for, for a process to go forward. So uh, basically, the green button standards and our efforts act as a catalyst to, uh, to have energy usage information get to the, uh, allow the benefit to the consumers and to uh, the utilities that, uh, that it can have. And in order to do that, in order to uh, have that catalytic effect, you need three things. You need, of course, you need standards as a starting point because that's what, you know, you, you won't get interoperability unless you have some agreement on a standard exchange mechanism. But standards alone are not enough. Uh, you need uh, you need a testing and certification, and you need a users group and a service mark. If you don't, if you only have a standard, 
and you don't have uh, the service mark and the testing certification, then anybody and his brother can jump on the uh, bandwagon and claim uh, green button uh, uh, compliance. And that just creates a mess in the marketplace and a lot of overhead for everybody involved in dealing with all of the differences in implementations and what, what the standard actually means. And then finally, you have the, the issue of, uh, of open source and reference implementations. Because uh, uh, just with the standards and, and testing and certification, you have sort of like a bring me a rock concept where, uh, where a developer builds something and then he has to take it to some interop or, or to some agency that's going to uh, test it and say, oh, you failed. Uh, go, go back, bring me another rock. So with uh, open source uh, reference implementations, uh, implementers know exactly what they're going to be tested against in the testing and certification, and they can so somewhat ensure that they will be successful, as well as uh, increase the likelihood that their implementations will be interoperable with others in the marketplace. So have this concept of these three components uh, that combine together to uh, to accelerate the arrival of interoperable products and services. I hope uh, uh, that uh, that focus shows uh, that we recognize the, uh, the uh, problem that Ron was raising. So how, how, to, how to make all these pieces occur? Uh, so uh, from a technical standpoint, the SGIT has a PAP20, which uh, has an evolution roadmap for the uh, standards going forward. And basically along the bottom, you'll see that there's uh, three, three key tracks, and they represent the, uh, the uh, uh, corners of the triangle that, that, uh, that I showed you before. First, standards track. The second is testing and certification. And the third are reference implementation. And, uh, I think I'm starting to run a little short on time, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and go through this very quickly and get on to the next slide. But basically, uh, now, uh, uh, the PAP-10 standard, REC-18, NASD is, is the SSO, Standard Setting Organization, that develops the standards un underlying the green button. And uh, there are two, uh, uh, two main standards, the, uh, the PAP-10 standard, which is the information model itself, and the SB standard, which just defines a syntactic representation of the information model in XML and protocol for exchanging it. And um, in, re in that regard, these, both these standards have now in, have been completed and implementations are emerging in the marketplace. And so we, we are discovered some issues that need resolving. And uh, so we're, uh, there's going to be an update, maintenance update of the REC-18 and an SB errata update very soon. And finally, uh, an enhancement of SB based on lessons learned. And then in terms of testing and certification, the uh, UCAIUG is, uh, is, is, in, is uh, implementing the testing and certification uh, ITCA uh, uh, organizational structure so that uh, green button implementations of download and, and connect my data can be uh, tested and certified and uh, put together the, uh, the uh, marketing organization to, uh, to have a service mark and police it. And uh, finally, uh, there are uh, this green button SDK that we've developed that show sample uh, green button data files, and uh, there's an open source implementation that's being developed to, uh, to give uh, developers a, uh, a jump start on what to test against and test with and how to build their implementation. And then finally, you see in the top part of this diagram, the various uh, standing committees of the SGIT, the cybersecurity, Testing and Certification and Implementation Methods Committees uh, provide uh, guidance and steering to these uh, efforts in the SSO so that uh, these uh, rounded rectangles that are in the tracks in the bottom, each of these represents a deliverable of uh, concrete deliverable of tax funds. So uh, 
here, I'll just uh, say a few words about, uh, to summarize the uh, role of NASB and the role of UCAIUG. So uh, the role of NASB, they're conducting under their standards uh, process the update to PAP-10, the uh, updates to Direct 21, and updates to 22. And they're also going to work uh, uh, with the concept, uh, it's a concept of trying to see if there's a way to uh, publish the NASB standards uh, in an international forum. And uh, the role of UCIUG will be to establish a green button brand a trademark, guard that brand on behalf of certificate holders, and pool marketing resources to promote the uh, brand. And on the technical side, uh, they're going to establish an interoperability testing and certification authority. That's a sort of like uh, ISO uh, uh, 9000 for, uh, for testing and certification, best practices. Uh, implement the testing and certification processes, and they're going to develop the test plan specifications and software tools that will enable uh, implementers to, uh, to success, be successful in, in certifying for the standards. Uh, I guess I'll pause, I'll pause again for questions about that pretty quickly. Thank you. Thank you for that. Laying out that picture, there's a, there's a very complex web of, of technical and policy activity and um, review and certification activity involved in making all these components work together. So thank you for laying that out. Uh, and I think it's it kind of goes to heart of some of the concerns or some of the, the thoughts that we've been having here in Ontario about how products this could actually work. So to understand that there is a, a set of mechanisms in place to do that is, is very critical. Um, just to Again, whilst I've talked, it's an opportunity for people to raise their hands at this point. Um, Usman, uh, I believe you have a question. Yes, I'm really interested in your in your branding strategy and and uh, I understand how you're encouraging third party app developers to adopt their brand, to actually place the brand on their on their application. Um, do you guys want me to talk about how we've been encouraging? Um, Industry to adopt the standard, and then I don't I don't know if you guys want to talk about the branding portion of it. Yeah, both of those would be useful to hear, I think. Okay. Um, well, this is Manisha again from the um, Council on Environmental Quality. You know, from the White House perspective, we've really um, been trying to encourage these different companies, the third parties, um, essentially, to adopt the Green Button Data Standard, and we've been basically doing it through these round, this round of announcements that we, we've had over the last seven or eight months. Um, many times it's coupled with an event that's going on. So in uh, March, there was the Edison Electric Institute uh, was holding their annual executive meeting, and we um, invited the CEOs of these different utility companies to um, the Roosevelt Room in the White House, and um, you know then had a, a press release and a blog and in that press release and blog, we um, we noted all the different companies that had um, decided to publicly announce their adoption of the green button uh, data standard, in addition to the utilities. And and then the, those companies also released um, press releases, independent press releases, on the same day at the same time, more or less. And so we continue to do that. Um, it, it, you know, it was a good good way to. Um, we also collected statements of support from those companies and then put it on our White House website. Um, and then we've, you know, many of the companies have been involved with, um, you know, that some of them have um, participated in the Apps for Energy contest or the Energy Data Initiative or um, are working with some of the different utilities. So I think uh, it's been a good um, just incorporating the, the energy, the Green Button Data Standard into their platform and then publicly announcing it and then us celebrating their announcement um, and their adoption of the data standard has been um, one way that we've encouraged them to uh, um, to participate in our program. Um, and then, so this is Dave. I might step yeah, go ahead. a little bit more. The um, uh, With respect to the, the, the trademark, in essence, as we develop more of this testing and certification program, we're going to want to be able to indicate uh, compliance with it and 
and uh, successful testing against it. So that gets into the um, you know the testing and certification, and you know that's going to be more developed in the future part. What we are currently operating under is that the uh, Veterans Administration that Manisha had mentioned earlier with the blue button uh, had you know, trademarked that, and we've worked with them and gotten a, you know a, a comfort letter you know, for lawyers uh, that enables the green button. Uh, program to use um, their mark in conjunction with uh, energy information, you know, campaign working uh, between the federal government and the implementers uh, in industry. Um, and there'll be additional uh, follow-up on, you know, basically all of these kinds of issues. So, so that's the current status, and it will head more towards, um, you know, additional work to uh, continue to establish and refine the brand. Hopefully that may give you an indication of uh, what you were looking for. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. I'll, I'll just I'll just add that um, that uh, as as uh, as people uh, make uh, these developments independently, the uh, the implementations tend to uh, to diverge a little bit. And what what happens for apps developers? Uh, what happens for apps developers is they start having to. Uh, write exception handling code, how to deal with different situations that they confront. And it turns out in, in development of these kinds of software, very quickly the exceptions dominate the code base and, and the actual implementation uh, becomes a smaller part. Uh, for uh, utilities that start exposing data, if they haven't uh, uh, gotten a, a got, if they don't have a really uh, well-defined testing and certification regime for their implementations, what happens is they end up having to deal with a lot more technical support issues with the apps developers uh, trying to adjust to their differences, as well as uh, customer uh, confusion about uh, about the uh, uh, in constant uh, experience that they have. Well, why why doesn't this feature work? Well, you're Utility didn't do that feature, something like that. So it's in everybody's interest to get um, get a uh, sort of a well-defined, testable, verifiable definition of minimal functionality that can be and certified, uh, so that uh, so that everybody's uh, protected from uh, from uh, the uncertainty that that, that that exists without it. So uh, in doing that, you have to have an organization that has an interest in the service mark. And in, in, in typically, organizations that have service marks are trade organizations of like-minded vendors of products and services that come together and establish the service mark and define what it means. And in Green Button, at the current time, UCAIUG is uh, developed developing all of this infrastructure, this component of it. And as it becomes available, uh, I think that, that uh, third-party apps developers will want to partake of it. And even more important, right now, as you guys are pioneering the industry and building the, these tools, and sort of finding the rocks uh, that have to be overcome, we want you involved in defining the certification process. And you can contact Dave or, or myself or Manisha to uh, to get uh, keyed in. These, 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 this certification process is being done in an open uh, SSO forum, so anybody can participate. Thank you. Um, just in the interest of time, if we can move to the next section, on just to highlight some of the um, salient points from this section, and then we'll take a last set of questions at the end. I think it just might be worth picking some of the, the highlights out from this last section. So uh, this slide is, is, is really important because of uh, something that, uh, that Manisha mentioned earlier in, in the, at the beginning of the presentation. That, you know, my, the first thing that, that an engineer may think of about energy usage information is a graph that shows usage over time. But the number of consumers who are interested and in, uh, going to uh, want to use that information or can use that information are far and few between. But uh, what availability of green button data has shown is that there's a, a, a tremendous spectrum of applications and benefits that can be provided 
by using this data, mashing it up with other data, and providing net benefits to the consumer. And almost not, and none of them involve showing a graph to, uh, dependent on a graph to the consumer. So uh, this slide, uh, which I won't read to you, but uh, it shows uh, some of the, the apps, the, kind of the, the scope of the apps that people have developed. Uh, this one, uh, just the facts, uh, tells you what the uh, green button data is, and um, uh, I, won't, I won't read that to you. But what, what, what this one shows, this, this shows the, uh, the hierarchical nature of, of green button data, and as David mentioned earlier, at the top of the uh, hierarchy is the concept of usage point, and that's the uh, spot in the uh, energy uh, uh, system be it uh, electricity, gas, or water, uh, where measurements are made or represented to, to have been made. Usage point as a service category. Is this an electric service, a gas, water, sewage, whatever? It has uh, meter readings, which are essentially a certain kind of measurement, like it might be kilowatt hour usage, or it might be kilowatts, or it might be therms. And uh, meter readings are described by a reading type, which tells you what the units of measure are and stuff, and uh, the, the readings themselves are made up of interval blocks, which are groupings like hourly, daily, weekly, monthly uh, interval readings, which are the actual, uh, the, the actual measurements and costs associated with them. And you can uh, tag the uh, readings with the quality. And uh, usage point can have any number of meter readings uh, that, make, that make sense. So uh, you might have a whole, a whole series of different measurements at a single usage point. Finally, uh, there are two uh, dashboards, electric power usage summary, which uh, summarizes typically uh, uh, billing period uh, statistics, and uh, electric power quality summary, which for electric power gives you some uh, indication of the uh, nature of the uh, power quality uh, during the period it, it covered. So what you see here is that the information is, is inherently multidimensional and uh, does not lend itself to a flat uh, file presentation like a CSV file or something like that. Once you got past the first trivial implementation, you would no longer be able to have a, a useful standard. So XML is the uh, is is the inherently hierarchical representational form of the SD standard. And then uh, I think this is the last slide I'll, I'll, I'll talk about. And uh, basically what it shows is that there are different sources of energy usage information. You can come from the utility, you can come from a, a metering system, it could come from a third party app. And because SD supports a uh, a single data format all at once, that's sort of like uh, download my data, I get a file, or it can be a sequence of messaging, a continuous stream, that's sort of like connect my data. Okay. The uh, various uses, different kinds of usage uh, can be supported with a single standard. So uh, what this, this diagram uh, represents is sort of the diversity of the sources and uses of uh, energy usage information that the green button uh, key point of interoperability enables. Uh, with that, I'll just uh, I'm just going to show you this last slide. If you get the if you get the uh, presentation, we have a lot of links about uh, about all of the sources of information to take uh, in the SGIP. The, the AC standard, the usage group, and the, uh, the testing and certification, open source implementation, and some other links. So this is a good, good uh, sort of uh, table of contents for where to launch off in studying this further. So with that, we'll turn things back over to Joe. I know we're close to the end of the time that you had uh, designated for this. Um, I don't know. Uh, if you'd like a, a few questions or if we wrap up and do things off the line, but back to you, Joe. Thank you very much indeed. I thank you for that last section as well. I think 
Uh, there's a very pertinent points in there about the variety of sources of data that this can connect to and then and then provide a common format to. Um, particularly relevant in Ontario given the, the diversity of, of metering systems and billing systems and other sources, both centralized and more distributed, that this type of data sits in. So this is a, a really quite a key important point uh, to address. So thank you for, for highlighting that. Um, Joe, if I could jump in just really yeah. quickly, um, this is extensible to gas and water and other things. So yeah. uh, in the future, you know, going forward, I think we'll be able to do some interesting things and in other um, infrastructures as well. Excellent, excellent point. I think that's, that's very true. And, and, and so some of the general principles extend as well. Um, so just briefly to see if there's any one or two last questions from the participants. Um, so I think we're, we're largely there. Uh, and thank you very much, um, David, um, Marley, and Manoush. Uh, thank you very much for providing a very kind of hands-on, real experience of what's involved. We've been having lots of conversations here, as you can appreciate, about the nuances of this, how we might get it to work, um, how the myriad of pieces come together. So to be able to um, tap into your direct experience and for you to share it so, so willingly and so so openly has been really very helpful to all of us, uh, I'm sure. Um, it's helped us, I guess, directly address a number of very key questions that, that we've been thinking about here in Ontario. Um, and from our end, Joe, we're interested in input and engagement. And you know, as people have uh, better ideas, um, we're quite open to trying to understand them and then working within the larger context to help address. Thank you. That's a that's a, a key point. I think one of the things we need to do this end is to formulate how we can we can uh, bring those ideas to the table and we can coordinate. I guess the efforts we're trying to initiate here in Ontario with with these. And that's a, a key point that we need to address. I think. Um, and so yeah, thank you, thank you again. And we will distribute this PowerPoint and a recording of this webinar to participants. Um, we will again. Invite follow-up questions if you want to email them through to myself or Samir, who um, emailed the invite out. Then we can collate those and to uh, Jeff Steinberg here. We can collate those and again facilitate a continued discussion around those points. And I suspect, no doubt, a follow-up of this to follow follow on event from this to maybe look drill into specifics as we start to formulate the plans here. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.